Hoodies and Playground Dates Kuro dies. Daichi yawned as he sleepily made his way from the bathroom to the Krasna Dome. He was exhausted from playing all day long at training camp and from yelling some sense into his kohais. He really just wanted to sleep. He took a deep breath with half-closed eyes and inhaled the fresh air coming through an open window. The cicadas were pretty loud at this time of the year, but Daichi didn't mind. He was a country boy, as Kuro liked to call him, so this made him feel a bit more at home in this foreign city. He hid his arms a bit more in his hoodie so that not even the tips of his fingers were outside. Another yawn escaped his mouth. He could really sleep right now in here. The clothes were comfy, the air was fresh and the noise is pleasant. Nice hoodie, Samura. A voice came from the dark. Daichi startled, hand flying to his heart. He was very awake suddenly. God damn it, Kuro, he mumbled. You almost gave me a heart attack. Kuro laughed and stepped out of the shadows. It wasn't my intention, but funny to watch anyways. Yeah, Daichi said with a stern look. Definitely not your intention. It really wasn't, Kuro pouted. I just really like your hoodie. My hoodie? Daichi looked down his body in confusion. What's so special about my hoodie? It looks comfy, Kuro shrugged his shoulders. And this is so important, you have to keep me from sleeping. It was just an observation, Samura. Kuro raised his hands in defense. Yeah. They stood there in silence for a moment. Daiji was fully aware that he could just turn around and go to bed, wish Kuro a good night and forget this whole incident that he could not make any sense of. But his feet were practically glued to the ground and he couldn't move. He didn't understand anything of this, only that Kuro had something mesmerizing, his eyes glowing in the dark of the night. So, Kuro broke the silence. How much for the hoodie? Four packs of ice cream and a date. The words left his mouth before he could think about them, and Kuro didn't give him a chance to take it back. Deal, he said immediately, and a grin crossed his face as he turned around and walked down the hallway. Night, Samura. He raised a hand as if waving, but didn't look back. Daichi stood there with an open mouth, his mind spinning, trying to calculate what had happened just now. Had Kuro Tatsuro just agreed on a date? A warm, tingling feeling spread in Daichi's stomach and he frowned. What the fuck? And the bastard just left him alone with that. When Daichi lay down on his futon to finally sleep, he tried to convince himself that it was just a silly joke between them. Neither of them had been serious. At least he hoped so, because he didn't want to know what kind of disaster would await if Kuro actually bought four packs of ice cream. And most importantly, if he was serious, Daichi had to give his favorite hoodie away. No, of course they were only joking. Daichi wasn't completely awake yet. He really tried to listen to Suga complain about some sort of technique he tried to learn but didn't quite succeed. He tried to listen to Asahi's encouraging words and he really tried to participate in the conversation to motivate Suga, but he hadn't got any sleep last night. After the encounter with Kuro, all the tiredness had been gone and no matter how often Daiji had assured himself that it didn't mean anything, his mind didn't stop thinking about it. A date with Kuro. It probably wouldn't even be that bad. Although the captain of Nekoma really got on Daichi's nerves and he couldn't stand him at all at first, he kind of grew fond of the stupid nerd. No, no, he had to stop thinking about the stupid date with that stupid captain. It wouldn't happen and he didn't want it to. It was just fine as it was, teasing each other, pretending to be enemies. Daichi, are you listening? Huh? Daichi snapped out of his mind and looked up. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Suga made a face and slid a cup of coffee over the table for Daichi. You really need to sleep more. You're getting burned out. Daichi accepted the coffee with a slight smile. I'm not burned out, he mumbled. I just couldn't sleep. How come? Asahi asked. Daichi usually didn't have trouble sleeping. Kuro, Daichi thought. Dunno, said and said. I guess I'm just a little nervous that we won't survive this camp. You mean mentally, physically, or as a team? All of it, Daichi groaned. It's really nerve-wracking losing all the time and having to deal with people like Bokuro and Kuru on top of our own little idiots. He buried his face in his hands. I really just need some sleep. Morning, Sabamura. 
Daisy groaned somewhere. How did Kuro always appear when he started thinking or talking about him? He didn't look up, but heard the screeching of the chair being dragged across the floor and Kuro letting himself fall onto it. So, he started, and Daichi moved his hands away from his face to look at him. About our date. Daichi's face instantly turned red and Suka choked on his coffee. <laughs> what? He asked, terrified. Date? Mia, yeah, you jealous? Kuru smirked. Suga looked between the two as if they murdered someone, and as he laid face down on the table, done with them all. It's going to be really sperm. Daichi covered Kuru's mouth before he could say any more embarrassing things. It's just a joke, Suga. Calm down, he said and put on a smile. Uh huh. Kuru looked at him offended. No, you're not, Daichi said, still smiling sarcastically, which made Asahi wince. Please, let's go, Suga, he whined. I cannot with these two. It really is too much for me so early in the morning. Suga protested, but Asahi stood up and dragged him away. Kuru licked Daichi's hand. Ew! Daichi let go of Kuru with a disgusted face. What do you want? Kuru rested his head in his hand. Your hoodie, he said. That's why I want to know about our date. Well, Daichi was a bit taken aback. He didn't think that Kuro was actually serious about it, when he himself didn't even know if he said it as a joke or not. Uh, you didn't complete the other part of our deal, so I don't see why we should already talk about the date. Kuro grinned as if he had waited for Daichi to say that, and Daichi had a really bad feeling. Oh no, what did he do? Well, when you're saying it like that, Kuru said slowly, still grinning, and from behind his back, he pulled out a stack of four packs of ice cream. Daichi looked at it with wide eyes. Kuro! he exclaimed with horror. His mouth stood open, and he let out a short laugh, not believing the sight in front of him. <laughs> what? You said you wanted ice cream, so I got you ice cream. Kuro shrugged his shoulders, seemingly pleased with himself. Where the fuck did you get so much of it since last night? And where the hell do you think we're gonna store that? Kuru opened his mouth with a raised finger but closed it again and made a face. Well, uh, he scratched his neck. I think I didn't think that before. Daiji face palmed and took a deep breath in. He was in love with an idiot, he realized. How did that happen? But you have to admit it was kind of your fault, Kuru defended himself. I mean, you made the deal. Daichi stared at him in disbelief. It was a joke, he exclaimed. I didn't think you would actually get four bags of ice cream. Well, I did, Kuru responded, and I will take you on a date, so I expect you to give me your hoodie. Okay, I will go on a date with you if you tell me what to do with the ice cream, Daichi agreed. You can't make a deal of the deal, Kuru said. The deal was to get you ice cream and go on a date so I get your hoodie. Everything else is not my problem. Taichi looked at him with a pout and big eyes. Kuru tried to resist his stare, but eventually he gave in and groaned. All right, I guess I can help you sneak into the kitchen to put it into the freezer. Taichi grinned. You're really easy to manipulate, he said. Kuru flipped him off with a smile. You should be happy I really want your hoodie or this would be the point where I'd cancel our date. Daichi laughed. We haven't even planned it. And who says that you aren't the one who's desperate to date me? Kuru smirked. Well, you're the one who asks for it. I just want your hoodie. Daichi narrowed his eyes. Damn it. He got up and took the ice cream. So, help me put this away and then we can talk about our date. You free tonight? Kuro asked as he followed Daichi to the kitchen. Tonight? Daichi asked. Is this just a ploy to get my team to lose all the matches because I'm too tired? No, Kuro answered. Although I have to admit that would be really clever and also really cruel. No, no, it's just the only time of the day where neither of us is on the field for training. Fair point. Daichi thought about his options for a moment. Of course he could say no to this, so he would be awake and fit for the training, but he already admitted to himself that against all logic he really liked him, and 
when would he ever get another chance to go on a date with Kuro Tatsuro? No matter how bad it would be. Okay, he agreed. Tonight it is. Nice, Kuro grinned. Let all the planning to me. It's gonna be the best date you have ever been on. He put his arm around Daichi's shoulders. Daichi snorted and wiggled out of the touch. <laughs> it's not the best of conditions you got here. I mean, at night, at training camp, without a pork or a restaurant or a bar nearby. I'm really curious what's gonna be there to make it the best date. Hey, Kuro looked at him offended. I'm there and I'm clearly the best thing you'll ever get. Taichi shook his head laughing. This was gonna be some hell of a night. Samura, Kuro whispered and tapped Daichi's shoulder lightly. Daichi groaned and turned around on his futon. What? he asked sleepily. You ready for our date? Even with closed eyes, Daichi knew that Kuro was grinning. He groaned some more and slowly sat up. Give me a moment, he whispered and yawned. Then he threw the covers away and got up. He hadn't changed when he got to bed because he knew that he would get up again that night, but he had really needed at least an hour of sleep before he met up with Kuro. Kuro held out his hand and Daichi took it, his heart suddenly beating really fast, partly because it felt really illegal sneaking out of the dorm at night and the adrenaline in his body was very high, but also because of the physical contact with Kuro and the thought of actually going on a date with him. Kuro dragged him out of the room and into the kitchen. What are we doing here? Daichi asked quietly. Eating ice cream? Kuro said and pressed a spoon into Daichi's hand. What flavor do you want? We've got chocolate, vanilla, my personal favorite pistachio, and raspberry, I think. Uh, did you need pistachio? He asked. I've never actually tried it before. Kuro looked at him with a shocked face. You've never... Okay, pistachio it is. He grabbed one of the packs of ice cream that they had put in the freezer earlier that day. Let's go outside, he said, and they made their way out of the building, both of them with a spoon in their hand and Kuru with the ice cream. And now you try it, Kuru said, when they sat on the grass behind the gym as he opened the pack. Daichi smiled and took a spoonful of ice cream. He ate it while Kuru looked at him eagerly, waiting for an opinion. Daichi laughed. I can't taste properly with you looking at me like that, he complained. Let me take some more. Kuru did not look away, and so Daichi had to try to ignore him. Mm, he made it taste... different? But definitely not bad. He dipped the spoon in the ice cream again, and Kuru still stared at him expectantly. Why? he asked with a full mouth. Is it worth being a favorite flavor? Daichi hesitated. I don't think it's my favorite flavor, but... he said before Kuru could be disappointed. It's going to my top five. Kuru smiled contently. Good enough, he said, and now also started to eat the ice cream. Mm -hmm. He made and practically melted at the taste. God, how I love pistachio. Daichi laughed. Are you sure you're not going on a date with that ice cream? Oh, don't worry. You're always the number one for me. Daichi felt the heat rising to his face, but he still smiled fondly at the other captain, who was too preoccupied with eating to notice. Do you want to go to a playground? Kuro asked after a while, when they finished the ice cream and Daichi really couldn't fit a single bit more into his stomach. Playground? he asked. Yeah, I saw one not far away from here. Okay, Daichi agreed, a bit confused, and laughed. Kuro stood up, took Daichi's hand and pulled him up. He didn't let go when they started walking, and Kuro led them to the playground. Daichi didn't mind holding hands. It felt good, although it made him think of the middle schooler's first crush with how nervous it made him. Aren't we a little too old for a playground? he asked. You can't be too old for that, Kuro looked at him with a smirk. Or are you afraid you won't be flexible enough to fit through all the spaces? I'm not, Daichi protested. I bet I could climb faster than you. I bet I could run faster. Wanna race? Okay. And Kuro let go of Daichi's hand and started running. Hey! Daichi shouted. That's an unfair advantage! But he also started running. Many training sessions and penalty rounds they had to do after losing a game really paid off and Daichi could catch up with Kuro and he reached 
the climbing frame first. He laughed and shouted triumphantly. Kuro huffed and put his hands on his knees. How are you still winning? Although I started before you. <laughs> Losing all the games has its benefits. Then she grinned. I really don't want to know how often I had to run up that hill. That's unfair. Kuro was still catching for air. Unfair? Taichi let out a laugh. You were the one with a half start. If someone was being unfair, it was you. I was running extra slow to make you feel good, Kuru said, but Daichi smacked his head as a response. As if. Daichi started to climb the frame and Kuru followed, eager to not lose another race. Daichi still was faster, though. This is not fair, Kuru pouted. I'm never going to a playground with you again. Daichi laughed as the wind was blowing through his hair. He didn't know if his red cheeks were from the wind and the cold of the night or because he really liked being here with Kuro. He closed his eyes for a moment and took it all in. The quiet of the night, Kuro was huffing next to him, the smell of the fresh night air and the rustling of the wind. No matter how this night would end, Kuro hadn't promised too much. This really was the best day. But Aichi had the feeling that hadn't much to do with Kuro's planning, but more with the fact that it was Kuro that Daichi went on a date with. He felt like he'd do anything with him and be happy about it. I want to take the slide down, he said. Oh, me too. Kuro sounded really excited and Daichi laughed again. They climbed down a bit to the slide and Daichi was the first to go down. Kuro followed. He looked at Daichi with glowing eyes. Again? he asked, and Daichi's heart fluttered. He nodded and they climbed up again. Wait, wait, can we like slide down together? Kuro asked. You sit down first and I sit down behind you. I'm not a child anymore. I'm not gonna sit in the front. Well, I suppose I'm more of a child than you, but my legs are longer. Although you are younger than me, Kuro argued. Daichi sighed and gave in. He sat down. Kuro slipped his hands under Daichi's arms and put them together on his stomach. He let his head on Daichi's shoulder and Daichi stopped breathing for a moment. He swore his heart also stopped and if he didn't pay attention, he was gonna die. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> I don't think it's a good idea to put your hat there, he said. What, am I intimidating you? Kuro asked with a smirk. No, Daichi turned around. I don't want to knock you out while sliding down. Kuro sighed but put his head away. You're no fun, he pouted. I'm being responsible, Daichi protested. You wouldn't be that whiny anymore when I'd have to call the ambulance and explain to them how the accident happened. A riot, Kuro gave in. You're right, as always. Now let's slide down. It turned out that it wasn't that easy to use the slide together. It wasn't exactly what you'd call smooth. They got stuck multiple times and had to use their legs to get down the last bit, but they had fun and nearly died laughing. <laughs> Seesaw swings, Daichi asked, still laughing and trying not to piss himself. Swings! Kuro managed to get out between laughter, and they stumbled towards the two swings. Daichi wiped away a tear. No need to cry, Samura. It's not actually that scary. I can stay at the side to catch you in case you fall from the swing. Shut up, Daichi hit him. They sat down on the swings and calmed down a bit. It didn't last long, though, as Kuro started a race as to who could swing higher. When they were so high, the chains of the swings started clattering and they were swinging really bumpy. They agreed on a tie and slowed down, laughing. I really like this date. That you sat sincere and stopped with his feet. I told you it'd be the best date you ever had. It was. I had fun. <laughs> Thank you. You still owe me that hoodie, though. You really have to destroy the romantic moments, don't you? Kuro shrugged his shoulders and grinned. I really want the hoodie. He laughed. Daichi shook his head and pulled the hoodie above his head. Here, he said, and handed it to Kuro. Take it. Aren't you cold now? Taiji shook his head. We ran around so much, I'm really hot. Sorry in advance if it's sweaty. It's fine, Kuro returned and put on the hoodie, although he must be really hot too. It was a bit weird to see Kuro with his hoodie, but he didn't mind. It looked good on him. Nice hoodie, Kuro, he said with a grin, imitating Kuro from last night. Yeah, Kuro looked at him with a soft smile. I got it from someone special. They sat there in comfortable silence for a while, both in their own thoughts. I think we should head back, Daichi said into the quiet. 
it's getting really late and we have training tomorrow. Yeah, Kuro stood up. They walked back, slowly this time, not racing. Daichi grabbed for Kuro's hand and looked at him questioningly. Kuro squeezed his hand slightly, which gave Daichi the reassurance that this was okay. It may seem like this is all a joke to me, Kuro started, but I do really like you. He looked at Daichi. And I'm glad you made the deal with a date, because I don't know if I would have been confident enough to ask you otherwise. You were not confident enough? Daiji nudged him playfully. Well, you are making me nervous, Samura. I don't think anything would make you nervous. A lot of things make me nervous. Waiting at the cash register of the supermarket while my mom disappears to get some groceries she forgot, for example. Or having to call some weird member of my family. Daiji laughed. No, but seriously, Kuro said. I'm not as tough as you think I am. You are tough, Daiji squeezed his hand. You're the best captain I know, and you do everything for your team, and you hide all your insecurities behind your teasing attitude, which for some reason just makes you even tougher in my eyes. Oh, and you're standing up for your friends, doing everything you can to make them feel happy and comfortable. Daiji smiled at him a little bit sad. I know you think little of yourself, although you always act like you're the best. But you don't have to. You're perfectly fine the way you are, and I really like you. God, I don't deserve you, Kuro looked away. Daichi tilted his head. You need me to talk some sense into you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. They were near the entrance, and out of a sudden flood of emotions, Daichi pinned Kuro against the wall, a hand next to his head. Kuro winced. I'm sorry. I tried to contain myself, but I really really want to kiss you. Daichi said quietly, voice dark and raspy. Kuru whined, face flushing red, and slowly slid down the wall. Daichi looked him up and down, and an amused smile crossed his face. He leaned forward, his mouth next to Kuru's ear. So, you're acting all floaty and confident all the time, but this is making you weak in the knees? It's really interesting. I'm gonna remember that for next time. Daichi whispered, Kuro breathed in sharply and buried his face in his hands. You know, <clears throat> you're really intimidating like that, and I find it incredibly hard, he said with an unusual high voice. Does that mean I can kiss you? Yes, God, yes, please. And Daichi got a bit closer to Kuro, stared at his lips and back up to his eyes. He hesitated. He didn't want to destroy anything by not being cautious enough or misreading signals. God damn it, I say yes, stop worrying so much. Kuro mumbled and pulled Daichi by the neck so that their lips finally touched. It was a bit awkward at first, clumsy and new, but it didn't take them long to really lean into the touch. Daichi put his hand in Kuro's hair and sucked a bit at Kuro's lip, which made him moan. Daichi's heart fluttered at the sound and it gave him the confidence to explore the kiss some more, try out what they both liked. Kuro lowered his hand and slid it under Daichi's shirt. Daichi shivered at the touch, and Kuro took that as an invitation to caress his bare skin some more. With his other hand, he tucked slightly at Daichi's shirt and started to pull it up. Daichi pulled away and stepped back. Sorry, he said, as Kuro looked at him, disappointed. Just, no, we're outside. I don't want to get caught. We can go inside, Kuro suggested. Daichi shook his head, although his body was aching to continue what they were doing. We have to get some sleep. Come on, Kuro whined. When will I ever get the chance again to make out with Savamura Daichi? He pulled the face. Whenever you want, Daichi responded and raised his hand to carry Kuro's face. That is, unless you don't want me to be your boyfriend. Kuro's eyes widened. Oh, he said. Oh, wow. Boyfriend? That is a pretty big thing, huh? We don't have to be if you're not comfortable with it. We we can just be friends who make out from time to time. Kuro laughed. No, no. Boyfriend is good. Just a bit much to process. I mean, we kind of skipped the whole dating and getting to know each other part of the relationship. Well, Daichi shrugged. We went on a date, and we don't have much time left here, so we have to make the most of every moment we got, right? Yeah. Kuro said, and his eyes wandered down to Daichi's lips again. Let's please not think about the end of this. Why end? Daichi asked. I hope this will never end. He took a step forward. 
I hear a real funny sound where Kuru mumbled against Daichi's lips and then pulled him into another kiss, shorter this time, with less hunger, softer. So, you really want to be my boyfriend? Daichi asked when they parted. And I'm serious, by the way, I really want this. Or try to make it work, at least. It's gonna be one hell of a disaster, but yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to be your boyfriend. Kuru grinned. You're gonna be the death of me, Samura. Well, I'm the one who has to deal with a complete idiot, so I think we're even. Kuru smacked his hat playfully, but they both laughed. They headed inside, and in front of the Karasna dorm, they said goodnight with a short kiss and some affectionate words. Daichi was still smiling when he changed into his pajamas and laid down on his futon. He didn't know when he realized that this was all he had wanted. He had never fallen so fast for anyone, but the thing he had with Kuro, his boyfriend, just really felt right. Maybe it was rushed or chaotic, but that's how they were, and he was sure they'd make it work. Something is different, Suba said suspiciously at the breakfast table when Daichi was smiling brightly as if he hadn't just slept for a few hours. It's weird. I know what's different, Asahi whined. Someone has taken over Daichi who clearly doesn't know how he works and it's scary. Calm down, guys, Daichi said. Just let me be happy. I feel like this is gonna be a very nice day. Yeah, a whole new day of losing the matches, Asahi laid his head on the table. Hey, Daichi won. No self-pity. We're gonna stay optimistic. Pessimism isn't gonna take us for anyway. Oh, please, Daichi, Suga might spare us with the lecture so early in the morning. It's enough that we have to live with your extraordinarily good mood. Don't exaggerate. I'm not. Have you looked at yourself? You look like someone just gave you pizza and ice cream and a mansion with pool and car. Or like you won the lottery. Maybe I did, Daichi said, and looked through the room to Kuro, who was in a similar situation, surrounded by Kenma and Yaku. He looked up as if he had sensed Daichi staring and smiled at him. Suga followed his gaze and a knowing smile across his face. Is it possible that your mood is connected to the supposed state with a certain captain? He asked. Daichi shoved a fork of food into his mouth to avoid answering. When he left the dorm later, already changed to his training clothes, a hand grabbed his arm and pulled him into a bathroom. A few seconds later, Daichi found himself pushed against the wall, Kuro's lips all over him. Kuro, he complained between kisses, we're gonna be late to practice. We're the captains. We have time, Kuro muttered, and you said we have to make the most of every moment we get, and I lock the door so no one can interrupt us. So Daichi gave in and rolled his eyes in pleasure when Kuro sucked at the skin on his neck. He got rid of his jacket as fast as he could and helped Kuro out of his too. Kuro kissed him on the mouth again and sucked at his lip the same as Daichi had done yesterday, and Kuro grinned when Daichi moaned. He put a hand under his shirt and this time Daichi didn't pull away. Kuro helped him out of it and for a moment he took the picture of Daichi's body in. Like what you see? Daichi asked with a smirk. Always when I look at you. Ugh, oh, cheesy. Don't pretend like you don't like it. <laughs> Shut up. Daichi pulled Kuro by the neck for another kiss, and he pulled at his hair to have him as close as possible. I think it's just fair if he'd be shirtless too, he whispered. You just want to see me naked, Kuro smirked. Maybe, Daichi kissed him again. Would that be so bad? No, not at all. Daichi helped remove Kuro's shirt and ran his fingers over the bare skin of Kuro's torso. Kuro sucked in air at the touch. Is it bad? Daichi whispered. No, Kuru answered. Your hands are just really cold and I'm not used to the touch. Okay. Daichi's hand wandered down until he reached the hem of Kuru's pants and tucked at it. Kuru held his breath and Daichi's heart raced. This didn't feel real. It felt like a dream, too good to be true, and oh god, they would really do this now. Then he glanced at the clock and winced. Fuck, he cursed and let go of Kuru. We're late. God damn it, Kuro whined. You can't leave me like that. This is not good. Taiji glanced down and snickered. Well, you're gonna have to deal with that problem alone and we really need to go. He quickly put on his shirt and jacket, unlocked the door and headed outside, followed by Kuro. 
They ran to the gym and entered breathless. Sorry, coach. That you called was um <clears throat> stopped on my way. Gonna start with a warm up immediately. Yeah, cool. Edit. Um, <clears throat> there was a little problem on the way. The whole gym stared at them, and Daichi crossed the room to his team, a little bit confused. It wasn't that weird to be late, right? Maybe they should have arrived a bit delayed, but there were a lot of explanations for them being late other than making out. Suga's face was plastered with a wide grin, which was kind of horrifying, Daichi thought. Nice jackets, you too, Suga said, and Daichi pulled the face, confused. He looked down himself and, oh... Oh, in the act of the moment, he must have wrapped the wrong jacket because he was currently wearing Kuro's red Nakama jersey. He felt the blush rising to his face and looked at Kuro, who had a very similar red face and Daichi's black Horasana jersey on. Daichi hid his face in his hands. Fuck, he said. Very smooth, Daichi, Suga said laughing. <laughs> very smooth. Just leave it on now, it's too late anyways. Are you sure I can keep your hoodie? Kuro asked. They were standing face to face outside. The Kurasno bus are ready there for Daichi to get back to Miyagi. He hated goodbyes. It's your favorite, and I know it was just a joke. Yeah, Daichi said softly. Keep it. You always have something to remember me when I'm gone. Oh, why do you always have to be so sappy? I'm sorry. You can give it back if you don't want it. Daichi stretched out his hand. No, no, I'll take it. Kuro turned away a bit so that Daichi couldn't get the hoodie in his hands. Wait a moment, Kuro said and rummaged in his back. He pulled out a red hoodie and handed it to Daichi. What's that? Daichi asked, a little bit suspicious. A Nekoma hoodie? Kuro exclaimed as if that should have been clear already. For you to wear, since you can't take the ice cream with you, so I didn't fulfill my part of the deal. And what makes you think I would wear a hoodie of the rival? It's my favorite hoodie. And you gave me your favorite, so... Kuro fumbled a bit with his words. I thought if I have something of you, it'd just be fair for you to have something of me, and that's, you know... Yeah, that she said. I know. I'll take it. But I can't promise to wear it. It is still a hoodie from the rival. Well, I am your rival, but I'm also your boyfriend, so... Kuru smiled at him, and Daichi knew instantly that he'd wear the hoodie. Definitely. But Kuro didn't have to know. Yeah, he said, and moved to his tippy toes to give Kuro a kiss. Kuro flinched. We're in public, he whispered, a bit of panic in his voice. They all already know anyway, Daichi reassured. The swept jerseys and the big fat hickeys on Daichi's neck weren't exactly discreet. Besides, they are probably too occupied with saying goodbyes to Hinata. He pointed to a big crew of people around the red-headed middle blocker. Okay, Kuro said, took a deep breath and leaned down to give Daichi a proper kiss. I'm gonna miss you a whole lot, he said quietly, forehead leaning to Daichi's. Yeah, me too. Daichi didn't want to get sad, but he couldn't help to feel a little bit of sweet. You have to visit me, he said. That's an order. I promise I'll do that as soon as I can persuade my parents to skip one or two days of school for that. Good. Daichi smiled. And in the meantime, we just have to call each other and text as much as we can. God, you sound like this is gonna be the end of the world. Hugo laughed. It's still the same, you know? We're the same, just with a little bit more distance. Yeah, Daichi forced out a smile. Okay, I should get going now. They're waiting for me. Okay. But neither of them moved. Why were goodbyes so hard? Daiji wished he could just stay here with Kuro forever. He stepped forward and pulled Kuro into a tight hug. He breathed in his smile, tried to engrave it to his brain, and pressed his face into Kuro's shoulder. You're suffocating me, Kuro guessed. Oh, sorry, Daiji let loose. Okay, I'm really gonna go now. We'll see each other. He hesitated. He really wanted to say I love you, because he felt like he did. But he was too afraid that that would be too final, and he wanted to reserve it for the next time they see each other. So, with a goodbye, he stepped back and raised his hand for a small wave. Then he shouldered his back, and without looking behind, because he knew he couldn't go if he did, he ran to the bus where everyone was already seated by now. 
He sat down to Suka, who had reserved that place for him. Are you going to be fine? Suka asked with a worried face. Although he was a bit horrified by the idea of Daichi and Kuru dating, he still cared for his best friend, and he knew that Kuru made him happy. Daichi looked outside the window where Kuru was making faces at him. He laughed and flipped him off. Yeah, he said, and looked at Suga. I'll be fine, 